What I'm about to read to you is a timeline made up by a young woman named Sandy Beckham, a federal journalist who was at the Capitol on January 6th and put this timeline together. An important thread on November 9th, 2020, after Trump lost the election, he fired Mark Esper and installed Chris, Christopher Miller as acting Secretary of Defense and Cash Pestel. In D.C., the only people who can deploy the National Guard are the President of the United States and the Secretary of Defense. These are the 14 times Miller denied the National Guard. 1. The breach of the Capitol grounds at 12.53 p.m. when the Proud Boys broke through the barricades. Five minutes later, at 12.58 p.m., Capitol Police Chief Sund asked Secretary, I'm sorry, Senate Sergeant Arms to declare an emergency and declare and deploy the National Guard. Told, now, Chief, now the Sergeant Arms said that he would send it up the chain of command. 2. At 1.09 p.m., Capitol Police Chief Sund called the Sergeant in Arms for a second time with urgent request for the National Guard. Thousands of people had stormed on the lawn of the U.S. Capitol. Capitol. To put this in perspective, during the Kavanaugh hearings, they weren't allowed, the people protesting him weren't allowed within two blocks of the Capitol grounds. What does, what does that tell you? 3. At 1.34 p.m., Mayor, D.C. Mayor Bowser made a third request for the D.C. National Guard to Army Secretary... I'm sorry, the, Ar the Secretary of the Army, McCarthy, who reports to Acting Secretary of Defense Christopher Miller. Bowser is turned, is told, request must come from the Capitol Police. That is a lie. Miller is the only person who can give that order. 4. At 1.49 p.m., Chief Sun makes a fourth frantic request for immediate assistance in its dire emergency to the D.C. National Guard. Commander of the, of the D.C. National Guard, Major General Walker, loads buses in anticipation of the Secretary of the Army McCarthy's approval to deploy. 5. At 2.10 p.m., Capitol Police Chief Sund asks for immediate assistance for the fifth time receives a call for Paul Ingram, the House Sergeant in Arms, with formal approval to request the National Guard. At number six, Capitol Police took 19 minutes at 2.11 at 2 p.m. when the first windows were broken on the west by Powell boy Dominic Pasoli, Pasolo, I don't give a damn how to say his name, Till 2.30 when Oath Keepers broke of the East Doors. At 2.19, the Department of Homeland Security Director Charles Rodriguez advises the National Guard windows are being broken at the Capitol. This is the sixth request. Seven. The seventh urgent request, I've got to get boots on the ground. Mayor Bowser receives the call. Receives the call. Chris Miller, Acting Secretary of Defense refuses the National Guard. Number eight, at 2.36 p.m., the House Oversight Committee later reports that Capitol Police Chief Sun asked for backup. It's the eighth request. Nine, at 2.40 p.m., Police Chief Sun calls for the ninth time to request the National Guard. Tear gas is deployed, on the west side of the Capitol as the mob breaches the wall by the scaffolding where the inauguration was to take place. 10. At 2.42 p.m., the 10th request by the D.C. Metropolitan Police Chief Robert Culty when he calls for the National Guard. 10A. Ashley Babbitt, one of the people trying and to breach the Capitol and breach the Senate chamber is shot at 2.44 p.m. 
At 3.19 p.m., Army Secretary McCarthy had his phone call with Pelosi and Schumer, explains the full mobilization of the D.C. National Guard verbally approved by Acting Secretary of, De Secretary Def of Defense Chris Miller. However, they don't arrive until 5.30 p.m. as fighting continues for another two hours. Two hours. Two hours. 11. At 3.26 p.m., House Oversight Committee later reports Capitol Police Chief Sun calls for immediate assistance from the National Guard for the 11th time. 12. At 3.46 p.m., House Oversight Committee later reports that Ch P Capitol Police Chief Sun calls for the immediate assistance from the National Guard for the 12th time. 12A. At 4.03 p.m., <coughs> excuse me, insurrectionist announces Mar Mayor Bowser called the National Guard to help clear us out. The, the Defense Department told her, no thank you. 12B. At 4.08 p.m., Mike Pence calls on Acting Defense Secretary Charles, I'm sorry, Chris Miller and demands that he clear and secure the Capitol. 13. At 4.22 p.m., House Oversight Committee later reports that Capitol Police Chief makes verbal requests for the National Guard for the 13th time. 13A. Insurrectionists read Donald Trump's tweet at 2.24 p.m. Including in that tweet was the statement that Mike Pence didn't have the courage. 14. At, at, two, at 4.23 p.m., House Oversight Committee later reports that the Chicago Police Chief Sund gets verbal approval for the National Guard our support on the 14th call. All of this is should show you that Christopher Miller did not do his job. He had 14 calls from various people all in and around the United States Capitol while the January 6th attack was happening and refused to call the National Guard, completely contradicting what was said by Donald Trump on his untruth social. The fact is this. The attack happened. Donald Trump and his people did nothing to stop it, nothing to prevent, nothing even to prepare for it. First of all, I want to thank this, and this, this young lady, Sandy Beckham, for establishing this timeline. But in the end of the day, Donald Trump was criminally negligent, and not to mention, and his acting Secretary of Defense has already eluded to that fact. Donald Trump needs to be charged with, with planning and pushing and letting a terrorist attack happen. I believe the phrase is dereliction of duty. CTP, you know the truth. God bless. Peace to the left. Justice to the right.